Hey everybody, it's Carlissa, and today I'm going to be doing a what you need for your lease horse video. So the first thing that I recommend getting, and you don't even need to be leasing a horse to get this, is a saddle pad. Uh, you don't need to get a really nice Ogilvy one if you don't want to. You can get the Dover ones, and they work just fine. The second thing you might want to get is a pair of stirrup leathers with some stirrup irons, just so with your leaser's horse you don't have to be messing with their stirrups. You can just have your own and stick them on their saddle. And once you're done riding, you can take these back off and put their stirrups back on. I do this all the time. It's a great way to not screw up their stirrups and you get the right size the correct time. The third thing I suggest, it depends upon if the horse needs this, it's polo wraps. Um, these go with one of the saddle pads that I have and it is darker in person than it looks on camera right now but I really like polo wraps you can also get some boots open front boots splint boots any boots that they really need you can buy that and also something that I don't have right now is a half pad that you can get um the horses that I lease besides my very first lease horse you did not have to have a half pad, excuse me, but otherwise, if your horse needs a half pad, I suggest getting a half pad if you mean to buy your own half pad. And I forgot to mention this in the beginning, that all leases are different. So you may need to provide everything for your lease horse or everything might be provided for you. I suggest getting the saddle pads at first before you lease a horse. And like, I don't know, for Bishop and Nell and Lacey, my first horse, my first lease horse's name was Lacey. Everything was provided for me, but there's still certain stuff that I wanna get. So if you need to buy your own saddle, then make sure you get the half pad to what fits your saddle. And if you need to get a bridle, that's fine. These stirrups and stirrup leathers you should get, even if you don't need to buy a saddle, just because you won't be messing with their stirrups. And yeah, so all leases are different. And you may need this stuff, you may not need this stuff, but these are just some suggestions. The next thing I have is a horse and rider book, and this is a really good book. It has a lot of stuff on different types of saddles and tack care, and then you have different type of reins, lunging stuff, boots, and let's see. They have some riding stuff. And they have stuff for jumping and dressage and cross country and all that stuff. So I think this book is a really good thing to get. Even if you own a horse, this might be a good thing for you. They also talk about different like games. So you can see they have sack races and stuff. So this book is really interesting. It's like a complete guide for the horses and riders as you can see and this is also a good book if you're going to buy your first horse 
I suggest getting a book like this. So, yeah. I mean, it's a great book. Sorry. I actually just got a text from my lacer. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it talks about everything. And it's actually great because if you need to buy a bridle or anything for your lease horse, I remember for Bishop, I had to buy my own girth. And that's really the only thing I had to buy. I could use everything else in her tack locker. So, I almost wish I had this girth. Because it talks about... Excuse me, not this girth. This book. Because it has all the different types of girths in here. And they talk about saddlebags, saddle pads, stirrups. Like, sporty girths and cinches. So, yeah, I highly suggest getting a book like this. I got mine at a tack exchange, and this was only, like, $4. So, I think it's a great investment. Even if you can't get yours for cheap, like, at a tack exchange, because this was a used book, I still think you guys should go out and buy one. Um, these next things are very controversial. Uh, I have a crop. It depends upon if your horse needs a crop. I also show, so this is my show crop. My other crop that I use is downstairs. But basically, with that crop, it's fabric. It's fabric and not my nice bevel crop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it was a $7 crop. So, and I barely use it. My new horse, my new lease horse, Nell, actually really doesn't need a crop. You don't even need to, like, kick her. She's a very more squeeze type of horse. But my lease does have a dressage whip that I can use on her in case she's having, like, a lazy day. Next thing I have is a whip. Now, this whip is very brightening your face. I got this from Tractor Supply because my leasers broke and I decided to get a new one for her. And then that same day, she actually went to get a new one. So I just decided to keep this. In the store, it looked red because <laughs> this was the only color they had. But outside, this is neon orange. <laughs> and it looks kind of pink on camera, but I wish it was this color, how it's showing up on camera. But no... It's just neon orange. It has this white handle with a silver top. And the last thing I have is a lunge whip for all the crops and whips. Um, I also suggest getting a lunge line, but I don't have a lunge line quite yet. I borrow my neighbor's lunge line, but... Yeah, I just suggest this. Half of the time, you don't really even need to use it, depending upon how well your horse knows to cues. I know I just have to crack this a lot because um, Bishop, if I'm lunging him, let's just say, he is kind of a lazy horse and he doesn't really stay in, like, let's just say in the canner. I'll ask him the canner, he'll pick up his canner, but he won't keep it for very long. And depending on how long I need him to keep it, he'll just go back down to a trot literally within half of the circle that we're doing. So, a lunch whip is always handy. I'm sorry, this doesn't fit into the screen. I don't even know what brand this is. I just got it off a of Smart Pack. So, yeah. The next thing I also have is some fly spray. Um, that's the back of it. This is really good for fly season. I suggest getting this. And, I mean, I would rotate fly sprays every fly season just so the flies don't get immune to your fly spray. I mean, I really like the Ultra Shield Green. It repels ticks as well. But next season, I'm probably going to use Ultra Shield Sport. So then, my 
the flies at my barn are not getting immune to the Ultra Shield Green. And I suggest that for anybody who doesn't know that. That's just a little tip. I'm, I didn't know that actually until last season. No. A few months ago, somebody told me to rotate out my fly sprays. And next season, it's going to be a different fly spray. But I like using Ultra Shield because, I mean, that's just the brand that works on Miley's horses. And yeah. So, next thing I have is a halter. Um, Nell is a big girl. She is my... I didn't mention this in my last video. My updates video. Nell, we are not sure about leasing it. She... We're going to talk to the owner. I have another lesson on her on Monday. But we're going to talk to the owner. And see how long... How often she wants her to be worked. Because I know for lessons, she has one with me on Monday. She has some on Tuesday or Wednesday, I think. I can't remember. And I know she has a Thursday lesson with her owner. So I'm not sure about that. But Nell has a good halter. Nell's halter is actually leather. So I'm not going to buy her a halter. But this is my halter for Bishop. It's a size cob. And Nell is a size horse, so I have some horse size halters around my house, just because I have a lot of halters. <laughs> you can never have enough halters, but yeah, I like the nylon ones personally. Um, I like leather ones for shows, and I have not found the money to buy a leather one yet, so I don't have that. But, as you can see, it's purple, Bishop looks good in purple. <laughs> So, yeah. And to go on... And to go on with a halter, you're going to need a lead rope. Mine is just all wrapped up. And this one also has a chain. I actually got this before I started leasing. This was for my neighbor's horse when I would take him out. He is 28 now, but... He is very headstrong on the ground, so I got one with a chain on it, just so I could have a little more control. And this is actually pretty good, because Nell needs a chain, too. So, if I ever want to switch it up, and she also has a really nice leather lead rope, so I just want to use a nylon one one day. It's good that I have a chain. I also have a black lead rope that has a chain, too, so it won't look bad with the leather. So, yeah. And I would like to note that if you don't know how to use a chain and you're leasing a horse who needs a chain, I would ask somebody around the barn to help you or if you, like, have your trainer, ask them for help. Because if you put this on the wrong way, you can break the horse's nose and it can be dangerous for the horse. So, I... Do not suggest putting one of these on for the first time if you don't know how to use one. I can do a video on how to put on a stud chain. And I also want to clarify that everybody puts on their stud chain differently. I've seen people put a stud chain in a horse's mouth kind of like a bit. I've also seen people put it underneath their chin area. And I've also seen people put it over their nose. I put my chain over the horse's nose. So, that's the spot where you really have to be careful. Because as I've said before, if you don't put it on correctly and you constantly jerk, you can break the horse's nose. But just a little, you know, just a little bit, it's good. It just gets the horse's attention. And if you guys want me to comment down below, if you want me to do a video on how to put a stud chain on a horse, I can do that. Um, the next thing I recommend is treats. I have a pack of peppermints. And I also have some licorice. I got the all-natural licorice because I don't want to be putting chemicals into the horses, you know. And these came from Dollar Tree. 
I know. Great place for me to be saying I don't want to put horse chemicals in my horses. But I got this from Trader Joe's. So, I mean, it was expensive, but the horses really like these. So it's the Panda brand. And these are just the Coastal Bay peppermints. And I also have some Snacks Fifth Avenue treats back there. And I only give those during shows just because they're really sweet. And it's a good snack after a show. Um, so your laser might have provided this. Uh, I like to have this just because it's good, just in case anything happens while you're at the barn. And let's just say your leasers ran out. It's just some adhesive flexible bed wrap by the Coflex brand. At, and it's stretchy, it's unstretchy, so I always keep this with me just in case anything happens to Bishop or Nell. Uh, I have it on hand. And my Dover and M&M Tac, I don't know, well, actually I do know. M&M Tac is only in North Carolina. Alright, so I have some baby wipes. I use this to clean up their nostrils and your stirrups. I think this is just a great thing to have for a leaser or anybody really. I like to clean Bishop's nostrils out a lot because since he is an Appaloosa, you can see the dirt all in his nose. So I'll take this and clean it and also with my stir of irons, I'll just wipe them down with some baby wipes. And if you're leasing, I know on my lease contract it's that I had to clean the saddle after every use. So I just have a saddle soap and conditioner mix from Tender Leather Care. And it smells like grapefruit. Oh, it smells so good. And then there's a sponge in there. But it's the inside. And there's other brands that you can get. Um, this one was around $12, I think. Can't exactly remember. Hold on. I will look it up. Alright, well, my tablet has, like, officially froze. It's not moving. So, I can't look it up right now, but I will soon, and I'll include it at the end of the video. But, so the next thing I have is some Equispot, and this is just to, it's basically, like, it's to repel ticks, fleas, gnats, and mosquitoes. And where those dots are is where you were supposed to put it. And don't get this on your skin, guys. If you get it on your skin, make sure you go wash your hands right after. And don't, like, touch your face or your eyes or anything. So, yeah. Next thing I have is this joint cream. And it was a little sample that I got. I hadn't found the time to use it, but I will soon. I have two sprays. So I have this EcoVet fly spray. And you don't need to dilute it or anything. You can just use it straight from this bottle. And I also have an equine spray and wipe. Uh, you don't really need this. Um, I just got this in a pack of a bunch of samples from Dover. So, yeah. Uh, you want to make sure you get a grooming tote along with some brushes. Um, if you want to get your own, that's fine. If your leaser provides them for you, that's also great. And the next thing I recommend, this is the last thing, is an ear bonnet. Now, you can get a nice expensive one. This one was $30.00. It's from Horseware. You can get a nice looking one like this. I usually get these to match my saddle pads. So you can get one like that. 
Or you can get one of the ones that are on the cheaper side. Like this one. This one's on the cheaper side. Let's try to think. There's also this one that is on the cheaper side. And a lot of these I've cut the strings off of them. So, yeah. Cut the strings off of this. And it's the last style of ear bonnet that I have that's different from the rest. But I like these for summer. Now, these is not just a style of these tassels. These tassels actually keep the bugs out of the horse's eyes, not just their ears. So I really like these for trail rides. And I just recommend ear bonnets. Like, I have a ton. I actually got a new ear bonnet, but it's downstairs. But I'm going to wait to do the updated ear bonnet collection video once I get some more. So, yeah, I just have them in this little basket thing. I'm planning on putting them somewhere else for now. But, yeah. So, please comment and subscribe. And comment down below what videos you want to see. And I am about to go and look up this. This is actually from when I was little. And we just like randomly found it. So I have little kid games on here. But I am about to go and look this up for the price of that leather care. So yeah, hold on. It's actually working. Yay. So let's see. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Um, I'm just going to put some different things that I like. This is the Ethics. Now this is $50, but this is a really good leather care kit. Focus on that. That is a really good kit. If you go on to the Dover Salary website, it has everything. I'm just going to look up some saddle soap because that's what it is. Um, I don't recommend putting this on your bridle. It's because it smells good. And it comes in three different scents. Here we are. Okay, this is my bed. This is $18. And you can get it in the scents. Green Apple, Lavender, and Ruby Red Grapefruit. So here we are, and here we go, that is the product, so yeah, um, most of the stuff on this website, and not this website, most of the stuff in this whole haul, uh, what you mean for your first lease horse, is at Dover, I know this is a lot, most of this stuff, like the sprays, you're probably not going to need these along with the joint action cream and the Equispot. You're probably not going to need these items, but it's always good to have these just in case along with the vet wrap. But, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And comment down below if you have a lease horse or if you are going to lease. And if you found this helpful. Bye, guys.